Cave diving is extremely dangerous and it's for professionals only, otherwise you will die. Hello and welcome to Mr. Dark Time. There's a swimming hole in Texas known as Jacob's Well. You may recognize it as the photo with crystal clear water and a massive black hole that goes so deep it's just a black abyss at the bottom. Jacob's Well is a karstic spring from the bed of Cypress Creek in Wimberley, Texas. It is a 12 foot mouth filled with water that plunges 30 feet before continuing at an angle through 14 stories of an intricate cave system. Its water source comes from the Trinity Aquifer, which spans southwest Texas. The artisan spring once gushed water out of the cave mouth with a flow of 170 gallons per second. Now it's a mere ripple and will even cease flowing for some time. In 1850, European settlers found this magnificent hole with a fountain of water shooting up to five feet. The name Jacob's Well is referred to in the Bible, and explorers named it for its religious significance. As its fountain calmed to a light flow, more people begun using the spring as a swimming hole. While many preferred to lounge around the mouth and dip their toes in, some were more adventurous. Amateurs could get away with diving down several feet, but to get inside the caves takes much more skill and experience. The caves of Jacob's Well are an unforgiving environment and an extremely challenging scuba dive. At least nine people, but as many as 12, died trying to cave dive in Jacob's Well. Inexperienced divers often try to get into the cave system, which becomes such a problem that officials had to put a metal grate 40 feet down into the hole. The layout and formation of the underwater caves are confusing. The system features false passageways, narrow chambers, and multiple twisty tunnels. It's easy to become disoriented when navigating through a complex cave. An oxygen tank can only last so long, and if you don't know where you are and which way you should go, it's only a matter of time before you can no longer breathe. Experienced cave divers understand how serious a situation can get just from losing your light source. The first chamber is a straight drop to about 30 feet, then it angles down to 55 feet. The second chamber is a long funnel to 80 feet where there is a restricted opening to the third chamber. Inside the second chamber is a false chimney, which appears to be a way out of the well, but has trapped at least one diver who lost his life in that false chimney in 1983. The third chamber is a small room with a floor of unstable gravel. Divers must inflate water wings to navigate this chamber successfully, trying not to stir up silt or dislodge the gravel. The tightest restriction occurs 15 feet down the next tunnel, there is a knife-edged formation in the ceiling and fine gravel below. The few who have seen the fourth chamber say it's a virgin cave with fantastic limestone formations and no gravel. Covering the bottom is fine silt that can totally obscure vision when kicked up by one misstep. The passage into the fourth chamber is very tight. It's very narrow and prone to gravel slides, which is how two divers in the late 1970s lost their lives. It was so dangerous that rescue was unable to get them out, and one almost lost his life during attempting. Officials eventually flushed out one of the bodies in 1981, but they didn't remove the other one until 2000. Many attempts have been made to seal the caves, but determined divers always find their way back inside. Many divers who attempted to make their way into the very last chamber have never come out alive, and the majority have never come out at all. Back in 1983, Richard Patton and Clark McConnell, two college students and experienced divers, went to Jacob's Well to explore the fourth chamber. As they dove deeper and deeper, going from the first to the second, and then the third chamber, once they made it to the entrance of the fourth chamber, things went terribly wrong. They pried open a gate that was at the front of the entrance for the fourth chamber. Richard Patton went first, removing his tank and pushing it inside. He then wiggled his way inside the narrow chamber. Richard made it inside the fourth chamber, but then quickly began to wiggle his way back out of the chamber towards his buddy Clark. Alarmed, Clark noticed Richard swimming toward him, screaming, desperately trying to frantically get out of the narrow entrance of the fourth chamber. And that's when he realized Richard did not have his mouthpiece or his scuba tank. Clark begins to desperately try to pull his buddy out of the narrow chamber. Once he pops out, the two begin buddy breathing. One diver breathes while the other holds their breath something that is only done in emergencies. Swimming as quickly as they can upwards towards the surface, they made it out of the third chamber. They continued swimming out of the second chamber when they suddenly hit their heads. The two men realized they had just swam down a false chimney. 
What's even worse, they hear an awful sound coming from the tank, signifying they are out of air. Clark had taken a full breath right before the air depleted, immediately turned, and made his way out of the false chimney, and made his way out of the well. However, Richard was not as lucky. The final few moments Richard experienced were in total darkness as he desperately tried to find the surface. When his body was removed from the water, he was found jammed up at the very end of the false chimney. The well's last known victim, Austin, mail carrier Wayne Wood Russell, was an experienced topside caver and an open water diver, but had never attempted cave diving and was completely unprepared. At least nine people, but as many as a dozen divers, drowned trying to explore the bottom of Jacob's well. The fourth chamber was finally sealed up for good. However, the bodies of the divers could not be safely removed and are still trapped in the well. These strange lines in Peru were at first believed to be mere trail markers. When they were noticed by conquistadors in 1553, it wasn't until 1940, when a historian from Long Island University took interest, that the strange and very deliberate patterns created by the Nazca Lines were noticed. The Nazca Lines, which take up about 170 square miles, create the shapes of a number of creatures, including a condor, a hummingbird, a monkey, and a spider. Over time, more and more images have been found, including a whale, a set of hands, and a man. It's unclear both how and why the Nazca lines were made. The ability to draw these precise shapes without any sort of aerial view of the area is nearly unbelievable. Modern historians believe that the lines could have served a number of purposes. They might have been part of an irrigation system. The images could have been fertility icons. They could have been meant as worship of the god that took their shape. It also could have been an astronomical measure, but nobody knows exactly why. The New London School Explosion On the afternoon of March 18, 1937, a shop teacher at a school in New London, Texas turned on an electric sander. Unbeknownst to him, there was a massive natural gas leak under the school. It was absolutely horrific. The force of the explosion was so great that a two-ton block of concrete crushed a car parked 200 feet away. This event is actually why natural gas has a smell now. They started adding it after the explosion. Something like this could never happen again. Caspian Tiger was located just south of the Caspian Sea, commonly found in countries such as Iran, Turkey, Iraq, Mongolia, Georgia, Armenia, and even Central Asia. Its preferred surroundings were more of a desert environment with close proximity water sources complete with trees, shrubs, dense grasses, and reeds. In the 1970s, the Caspian Tiger was officially declared extinct. The main reason why this tiger became extinct was all down to its preferred natural habitat, which was also widely occupied by human beings, and surprise, surprise, human beings played a massive part in their extinction. They were hunted, plus they quickly lost their habitat due to human settlement add to the fact that their prey was also hunted and killed by humans, and the Caspian Tiger never really stood much of a chance. A mine fire in Centralia has been burning since 1962, and has left the town abandoned almost entirely. The place looks like a cutscene from the Silent Hill game. In fact, Centralia was one of the inspirations for the game. On first sight, Candido Godoy looks like a fairly normal town in Brazil. But if you take a closer look, you realize the town is swarming with twins. In fact, rumors say a Nazi geneticist fled to this town after the war. He started experimenting on the population, and that is what triggered the phenomenon. Cabayen is home to several caves that contains hundreds of mummified corpses. It's a good place to visit if you really want to have nightmares.
You may want to avoid this place if you're a dog lover. Dogs leap to their death for no apparent reason. And dozens of them have killed themselves over the last half century. Body Farm was actually a facility in Tennessee. Used as a training ground for the FBI and other forensic experts. They use it to determine time of death, cause of death, etc. And they use real donated cadavers. This means the place is full of dead bodies.